Throughout the years, the Looney Tunes cast has been involved in a wide variety of spin-offs. Some of them were major successes like Tiny Toon Adventures, others started off with a more mixed reception, but then developed a cult following like the Looney Tunes show. You're never gonna believe this. There is a guy standing on the side of the road who looks just like you. I'm about to hit him. <laughs> and then there's Lunatics Unleashed. That's in a whole other category. If you search Lunatics Unleashed on YouTube, you'll find dozens of videos talking about how this is one of the worst things in the history of ever, but no one talks about how it came to be, including the creator himself. Anyways, it's time to finally go over the complete history of Lunatics Unleashed. Thanks a lot, Masters of Fate. In the early 2000s, Warner Brothers was starting to get a little scared. Looney Tunes was popular, sure, the shorts were still widely loved and drew some strong ratings on Cartoon Network, especially during their yearly celebration of all things Looney called June Bugs, but it wasn't enough. They wanted the Looney Tunes to go back to high-powered S-tier popularity, and in their minds, there was only one way to do it. To introduce the characters to a new generation, something that simply airing the old shorts couldn't do alone. Warner Brothers used Tiny Toon Adventures as their main model. That was able to take some of the classic Looney Tunes characters and tropes, change them up a bit to match what was popular at the time, that combined with some good writing and stellar animation, was able to make a cultural phenomenon. What about my two bucks? Not only did it revitalize the Looney Tunes brand, but the Tiny Toons brand itself also became a big hit. So why not do the same thing for the kids of the 2000s? Christian and Yvonne Tremblay were brought on to head the project, and right away they were flooded with notes, specifically on how to make this new show cool and with it with the kids of today. And the alarm bells were going off left and right. Despite the fact that Tiny Toon Adventures did find some success in parodying modern life, or modern of the 90s, Welcome to the 90s. That's not what would drive the show. That's more of something like Animaniacs, and even then, they were at least clever and timely about it. Aha! But Warner Brothers, in a sense, decided to flanderize this spiritual successor, and wanted everything about this new project, now called Lunatics Unleashed, to bank on every single popular trope at the time, much like Dragon Ball Evolution would do a couple years later. Cool. The premise to Lunatics Unleashed was fairly simple at first. Six descendants of Looney Tunes characters, specifically Bugs Bunny, Lola Bunny, the Tasmanian Devil, Wile E. Coyote, Roadrunner, and Daffy Duck, were now superheroes for some reason, and they had to save the world from all kinds of evil tins that would rear their ugly heads. Let's get them! The main crux of the show was having serious moments, while having a little bit of comedy here and there to tie it back to the Looney Tunes classics of old, but Warner Brothers wanted more. They wanted more gritty moments, they wanted more serious elements, but what they couldn't get enough of especially was good ol' anime! It doesn't even matter! Yeah, this is right when anime started becoming the hip new thing on the block before it just became part of culture, I guess? So, Western animation having anime influences was all the rage. Shows like Kappa Mikey or the WB's own Shaolin Showdown were big examples. Lunatics Unleashed had all the anime tropes they could possibly fit in thrusted into the show, whether or not they actually made sense. I am Optimatus. It became very clear that Warner Brothers didn't necessarily want a good show, but they wanted a popular show. Something that's fast-paced and can hold a bunch of kids' attention and make them want to buy toys based on the show, but also brooding enough to capture the cynical teen audience's attention as well, thereby making a surefire hit. No. Now, if it just so happened to be a good show on top of that, that's a nice bonus. But remember what's really important here? Merchandise. Warner Brothers posted the official artwork for the six main characters online. What's up, Doc? And right away, people around the globe were not happy. 
Fans of the original Looney Tunes characters thought that this was a stupid decision, and they didn't want to see a dark, edgy Bugs Bunny. They also thought that the concept was ridiculous in general, and come on, look at these designs. Pandering to the cynical early 2000s age at its finest. Warner Brothers was in shock. People were all of a sudden not liking their bold new show? How could this be? Focus groups proved that this show was very popular amongst kids ages 6 to 11, their target demographic. How could this possibly have gone wrong? They immediately went into damage control, trying to convince people that Lunatics was gonna be great. Just give it a shot, please! You kids don't know what you want. That's why you're still kids, cause you're stupid. In an interview with NPR, Warner Brothers Animation President Sanders Schwartz was confronted with the question of whether or not the Looney Tunes characters are still timeless, and if they are, why bother with lunatics at all? He responded that Looney Tunes is great and all, but they need a new vehicle to introduce them to a new generation. This new show, Lunatics Unleashed, however, is, is a whole new show, and it is just it's a whole new show for a whole new generation of kids, but again, it, it, it's a new show, and it's for a whole new generation with a whole new group of characters to a whole new audience and, and a whole new show. And then proceeded to describe the show in a very boring, bland way that clearly indicated that it was created by charts and focus groups. Speaking of that interview, it also revealed that the backlash got so bad that an 11-year-old boy from Tulsa, Oklahoma made a website trying to shut the show down, and the attached petition had 200,000 signatures. Yikes! Bet Warner Brothers wasn't happy to see that. You started a website to protest the new Looney Tunes animated series. How come? I didn't like the way they looked. They just looked like a mad scientist experiment gone wrong. Unfortunately for that young boy, the petition didn't really have any effect. Lunatics Unleashed premiered on September 17th, 2005, and much to nobody's surprise but Warner Brothers, it was a mess. Ratings were okay, but the reception was universally negative. Firstly, fans of the original Looney Tunes hated it for its departure from the source material, we've covered that already, but also parents didn't like it because it was a dark take on a quote-unquote child-friendly property which uh, doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Sure, most shorts are able to be watched by kids, but they were originally made with adults in mind, so make of that what you will, parents. Upon the first episode's airing, a letter writing campaign was conducted to get the show canceled. Instead of yielding to the fan demand, Warner Brothers decided to extensively retool Lunatics Unleashed for season two. After that whole debacle, I'm honestly not sure why they would have thought a season 2 would have worked out better than a season 1, but to their credit, they somewhat listened. The tone was changed dramatically upon the second season. Instead of being a gritty, dark action comedy, it was now full comedy, no questions asked. The theme song change was enough to clue the audience in that, in some weird way, Warner Brothers was at least trying to tie Lunatics back to the source material. There were also more references to the original characters and less focus on the overall story arc from season 1, however fragmented it was, but this wasn't enough. The Lunatics brand was already too poisonous to save, but as it turns out, those who decided to give season 2 a chance were still not impressed. The writing was sloppy, the characters were flat, and nothing seemed to land. And to add insult to injury, the few Lunatics Unleashed fans that, you know, existed, were not too impressed with the show that they were invested in, suddenly becoming, uh, this. Well, he wouldn't have escaped if he used something better than this flimsy laser bar security. <laughs> After this, Warner Brothers decided to call it quits and cancel Lunatics Unleashed, never to be heard from again. Or so we thought. Lunatics Unleashed never truly went away. Oh sure, the show was dead, but its spirit lived on. According to Sam Register, VP of Warner Brothers Animation, to this day there is still Lunatics Unleashed artwork hung up as a constant reminder of what not to do. Additionally, when being asked about their at-the-time up-and-coming Looney Tunes show called, well, uh, the Looney Tunes show? Great name! 
Also, the show will very likely not be covered on this channel in the future, just so you know. Peter Roth, president of Warner Brothers Television, had this to say. We want to reinvigorate the brand with the best possible execution. High quality, high end state of the art. Register had this to say. The bar had gone so low that we could only go up. Ouch, that's gotta hurt. Now it makes sense why the creators refuse to talk about this show. Lunatics Unleashed is constantly being pointed to, whether inside or outside of Warner Brothers, as one of the worst decisions the company's made in recent years. Granted, it would go on to make some considerably worse ones, but for television in the 2000s, yeah, they got next to nothing out of this. And whatever they did get wasn't positive. When will Hollywood learn? Trying to take something beloved, change everything about it, and force in nothing but popular tropes that are constantly misinterpreted is not going to work. After Lunatics Unleashed failed and failed hard, Warner Brothers kind of learned their lesson, at least until it came time to release Shaggy and Scooby-Doo Get a Clue, but that's a story for another day. Well folks, thanks for watching the video. What'd you guys think? Have you seen Lunatics Unleashed before? And if so, what were your thoughts? For me, I just think it's kind of lame. I don't think it's the worst thing ever, not even close, but I would definitely not consider it good. Much like Dragon Ball Evolution, I'd give it like a 4, 4.5 out of 10. At least it looked nice, but what about you? Comment below and let me know because I'm always excited to hear what you guys have to say. And now it's time to thank our wonderful Patreon people, starting with our Masters of Fate. Chan11, Drew the Stew, Kev Messick, MD the Dude, Platinum Bass, Quiet Chap, Ryan Williams, Timey, and Woody Woo. And now our executive producers, Albert Robinson, Blackjack, H.R. Hoffman, Indiscreet One, Leaf Storm, Ravioli Supremo, Unkale, and who else but Zane? If you too would like your name read at the end of every Media Mementos video, then why not consider donating to the Patreon? There's a fancy little link in the description below for you to check out. And if you want to get more involved in the Media Mementos fan community, there's a link to the channel's Discord server as well. Feel free to stop on by and say hello. Alright folks, thanks for watching the video and I'll see you guys next time. Where'd you get it? Iceland? Actually, no. That was one of those questions that didn't require an answer.